Thank you. <laughs> Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Two old maids laying in bed, one turns over to the other and says, Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. A nickel is a nickel, a dime is a dime, I got a house full of children and none of them's mine. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, you know it don't belong to you. I've never been to heaven, but I've been told, St. Peter taught the angels how to jelly roll. Take your fingers off it, don't you dare touch it, I mean, you know it don't belong to you. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, from the Memphis Jug Band, um, Will Shade in the Memphis Jug Band, written by Will Shade, 1927. Uh, Tom, do you remember what label that was uh, on? You don't? It's been a joy, you know, hanging out with this guy today. He's, uh, he's fa I wish I could live here. This, has been, this was my dream when I was a kid. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, when, when I was a kid, I was like 10 years old, 11 years old. And we lived in Schenectady, New York, and uh, I, I, I demanded that my mother take me into downtown Schenectady and to go to Apex Records so I could get a copy of Stan Freeberg's A Child's Garden of Freeberg. And she refused. And she you know, was like, don't you have enough records, right? And uh, so I took a, a BB gun into the bathroom and threatened to blow my brains out. <laughs> <coughs> and she, she caved. She <laughs> I mean, psychologically, you can, I mean, she just gave in. Okay, okay, I'll take you down. Get that BB gun away from your head. So I went to a school that was... Um, Really wonderful in Schenectady. For my first year of high school, it was it was great. It was uh, there were jocks and hoods, but they everybody went out for the talent show and stuff like that, and for plays. And uh, and then my parents had to move to Long Island, and I went to this horrible school where it was all just jocks and the hoods who hated each other. And of course, I was in the middle, the only bohemian in school, and they hated me even more than they hated each other. So I had to survive somehow in this school, and. Uh, so I joined journalism class and got myself a, 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 a column in the school newspaper and used it to blackmail everybody. And that way, that way uh, I, could, uh, I, could, I could survive, barely. Anyway, I also used the column to write about my trips into Greenwich Village. And it was, this is the early 60s, like 62. And I would go in because I would love the village. I would love the, the, uh, the, the eccentricity of it, the, the charm, you know, the, the, the magic of the streets curling around and stuff like that, and, and the, the, the stores, which will never be the same. Um, and, and there was, on McDougal Street, there was a cluster of three stores, three shops. When you went upstairs, there was the Folklore Center. And the Folklore Center was a hangout for uh, folkies, folk musicians. 
And you could rent a guitar, you could buy a guitar. Um, they had broadside magazines and broadside records. And broadside, these were, these were like sort of like left-wing um, folk music publications that uh, Bob Dylan, Phil Oaks would, would, um, uh, would subscribe, well, they, they added stuff to it. And, uh, and uh, it was just a great place. And uh, so I used to hang out there. And, uh, and then downstairs, you had the Gaslight Cafe. And the Gaslight Cafe was, was uh, fantastic. And it was, this was like a dream come true. It was like, like being in Bop Shop Records, you know? So, <laughs> and uh, yes, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, did it hurt somebody? Back? Oh, I'm saying. Anyway. So uh, I used to go down there, and uh, and you know sometimes I would have to play hooky the next day because the the, the, the train going back to Long Island is. Uh, it was well anyway. I, I used to sit there and watch uh, you know like Tom Paxton and uh, and uh, John Hammond Jr. and uh, uh, Noel Stuckey, who then became Paul from uh, Peter Paul and Mary. Ramblin' Jack Elliott, you know, Len Chandler, one after the other, all of these fabulous people would introduce me to this kind of roots music that you couldn't hear on the radio. But my favorite was the MC uh, of Hootenanny Nights, and that was Dave Van Rock. And um, yes, and Dave, Dave was, um, was uh, I'd say, six foot two uh, curmudgeon. He was like a very gruff bastard. Uh, that uh, he was, he was a, a wobbly, a communist at 27 years old. And I just loved listening to Dave. And he was a real character, as you can well imagine. And so I went up to him and I, and I asked if he gave guitar lessons. And he said yes. And so I started taking guitar lessons from Dave. I rented a guitar um, from Folklore Center. I brought it home. And uh, I didn't know anything about playing the guitar. so. I got a stick of resin, and uh, I thought, I thought, well, violin players do this, so I'm going to do it also, right? So I, I put it on the, the fretboard, and my, my fingers like got stuck. I couldn't go from one chord to the other, and realized I had made a big mistake. Um, so anyway, I would go up to Dave and Terry's house um, on West 15th Street. Um, Terry was uh, Dave's wife, and she was also managing Bob Dylan. And uh, Dylan would be sleeping on the couch sometimes. And uh, I think, like I, I said this morning on the radio, I think that Bob Dylan uh, slept on every couch in Greenwich Village. Because, you know, that's. Um. Dave, um, I took lessons from Dave for two and a half years and got really close with uh, him and Terry. And um, his signature song, uh, and well, he had a couple of signatures, so he actually was very close with Joni Mitchell, introduced me to Joni around uh, a couple of years later. But he did Clouds, uh, both sides now, and uh, did a beautiful version of it. But he was sort of known for um, this, uh, this ring game song uh, that was kids, the, the, the uh, children of, of uh, prostitutes in the South would get together and, uh, and, and do, when I go by Baltimore, Got no carpet on my floor. It's a ring game. And uh, in uh, tribute to my mentor and teacher, this is Green Rocky Road. When I go by Baltimore, got no carpet on my floor. Come along and follow me. We'll go down to Galilee. Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love, tell me who you love Little Miss Jane run to the wall Don't you holler, don't you call Don't you call, no, don't you shout When I sing, come running and out Rocky Road, promenade in green. Tell me who you love, tell me who you love.
see that crow way up in the sky He don't walk, no, he just flies He don't walk, no, he don't run Keep on flapping to the sun Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love, tell me who you love Tell me who you love, tell me who you love and Tell me who you love, tell me who you love Dave Van Rock. Thank you. While I was taking lessons from Dave, I went up to um, uh, my friend Stefan Grossman suggested that I go up and, uh, and take some lessons from Reverend Gary Davis. Reverend Davis and his wife Annie lived up in, uh, in uh, Harlem, uh, well, Spanish Harlem, in a little hovel, and uh, it's very sad. Reverend Davis was still singing on the streets, blind Gary Davis, and um, around the uh, 42nd Street area. And, he had st chains stolen from him. He had a guitar stolen from him once. He was blind. And, um, but if you've never heard a Reverend Davis album, Reverend Davis to me is one of the geniuses of American music in the 20th century. And run out and get Harlem, no, Blind Gary Davis, a Harlem street singer. Um, he, was, he was a genius. And, uh, and he was also a very funny person and a wonderful wonderful guy, uh, especially when, when, when his wife f found a bottle of gin in his uh, sport jacket and took it away from him. Um, that was a joke. Anyway, uh, I went up and, and took a couple of lessons from, uh, from Reverend Davis, and uh, this is one of the songs he taught me. It was also taught to me by Van Rong, so it's a combination of, uh, of both teachers, but I became a Candyman expert. This is sort of like a nonsense song. Um, written in uh, New Orleans around the, the turn of the century. The good century, not this century. <laughs> Candyman, been here and gone. Candyman, been here and gone. Candyman, been here and gone. Do anything in this God Almighty world to get my candy man home. Candy man, salty dog. Candy man, fattening hog. Candy man, salty dog. If you won't be my candy man, I'm gonna be your salty dog. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Run and get the pitcher, get the baby some beer. Do anything in this God Almighty world to get my candy man home. Candy man, been here and gone. Candy man. Been here and gone, candy man. Been here and gone. I wish I was in New Orleans, sitting on a candy stand. Stop on the red and you go on the green, don't you mess with Mr. In Between. Candyman, been here and gone. 
candy man Been here and gone Candy man Been here and gone Do anything in this God almighty world To get my candy man home Candy man Thank you Thank you um, the, one of the great things about being a kid in, uh, in, in those days in the village was, uh, was meeting some of these rediscovered blues artists because they were getting old and, and that was it, you know. So um, uh, Tom Hoskins and, uh, and uh, Dick Waterman in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, found uh, guys like Skip James and Son House and, uh, and Mississippi John Hurt and uh, they all played the gaslight at one time or another, and I got to meet them, which was a, a thrill and a, a great memory for me, um, especially because I got pretty close with John Hurt later on, which I'll talk about. But uh, it's a song by Skip James. Crow Jane, Crow Jane, why do you hold your head so high? Someday, darling, you're bound to die. I'm gonna get me a pistol, 40 pounds a ball. I'm gonna shoot my crow, Jane Lordy, just to see her fall. Well, I dug her grave with a grave long silver spade and nobody gonna take my crow jane's place and i lowered her down with a great long golden chain with every link i would call miss crow jane's name crow jane crow jane why do you hold your head so high? You know, someday, baby, you're bound to die. Well, you don't miss your water. To your will runs dry Well, I didn't miss Crow Jane, Lord Until the day she died Crow Jane Thank you Thank you I know what you're thinking You're thinking, oh, wait a second The guy was in Blood, Sweat, and Tears The Blues Project Why is he doing all of this folk music stuff? Well, thank you Um well, I will be getting to the rock era of this uh, thing, but, uh, but I, I do have to say that uh, uh, I will not be playing Spinning Wheel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate the, I hate the damn thing, but I will play you my guitar part to Spinning Wheel. R ready? Uh, every now and then I would do <laughs> instead, just to change it up a little bit. But um, yeah, so people have come over to me over the years and they say, wow, you guys took a lot of drugs in those days. And I said, well, if you had to play that for six years straight every night, <laughs> you'd be taking a lot of drugs also. <clears throat> so one of the... Uh, most wonderful people that uh, I was lucky enough to spend time with was Mississippi John Hurt. And um, uh, after our jug band, which I'll go into the jug band in a second, but um, we went out to California, my friend Stefan and myself, um, and we wound up meeting this kid, uh, Ry Cooter, and the three of us formed a, a, a band. We called ourselves the Gramercy Park Sheiks. Um, 
And if you don't think that's true, there's a photo in my book, which is only $20 over there. There, it, Tom's holding it up now. And um, it's, it's, I think it's pretty, pretty good book. And um, there's a picture of me and Stefan and, uh, and Rye. And it's not Photoshopped. If, you know, if I did that, I'd Photoshop Elton John or something. But Rye is, you know, is fabulous. Anyway, so um, we were out there, and we, we, we were sharing a, an apartment with Mississippi John Hurt, who didn't have a gig for that week. So, And John was just wonderful. If you ever see that picture of him with his pork pie hat and a smile, that's the way he was. I'm going to do a John Hurt song now. It's my variations on uh, on Richland Woman Blues. Give me red lipstick and a bright purple rouge, a shingle bob hairdo and a bottle of booze. Hurry down, sweet daddy, come and blow your horn. If it gets too late, sweet mama will be gone. Went to the fashion shop. What I like best Your own sweet mama Wants a brand new dress Hurry down sweet daddy Come and blow your horn If it gets too late Sweet mama will be gone Every Sunday morning You ought to see me go my wings spread out The preacher told me so Hurry down, sweet daddy Come and blow your horn If it gets too late Sweet mama will be gone Sunday morning You ought to see me go My wings spread out The preacher told me so Hurry down, sweet daddy Come and blow your horn and If it gets too late Sweet mama will be gone Well, the rooster say doodle do and the rich girls say any doodle do hurry down sweet daddy come and blow your horn if it gets too late sweet mama will be Mississippi John Hurt. Thank you. 
So there was a bunch of us in the, uh, in the village um, that were my generation, kids, and, and we, we, were so, we sort of like had two, uh, we were broken off into two groups. One was the country blues group, which I was in, and the other was the old-timey bluegrass contingent. And we wanted to, we were all friends, and we wanted to jam together. And so we needed to find a common denominator. And the common denominator that we found was jug band music. And so we got together and made have a jug band. And, um, and it was myself and um, John Sebastian, a uh, woman named Maria D'Amato, and, um, and uh, Stefan Grossman, and uh, the, the great uh, David Grisman on mandolin. It was a bunch of, it was a fabulous band, and, um, and Tom's still trying to get the record, I think. <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. I, I, I'm going to love to challenge Tom in the future. Anyway, as we become closer friends. Right, Tom? Anyway, um, so then the uh, Jim, Jim Queskin Jug Band uh, was, was uh, actually the, the more popular jug band. And uh, we were recording on uh, Electra, and the Queskin Jug Band was on Vanguard. And our record companies decided to throw a party so we could all meet. So we threw the party. Um, Queskin had like some great people in the band, Fritz Richmond and, uh, and uh, Jeff Muldor and uh, uh, Mel Lyman, some really good people. So we all had this party, and uh, our Maria uh, met Jeff and just fell in love, and she got really drunk that night and threw up all over Jeff, and uh, <laughs> Jeff asked her to marry him. <laughs> Some people have weird tastes, I don't, I don't know. And um, so Maria became Maria Muldor and quit our band and became part of the Queskin Jug Band. The rest is Jug Band history. Anyway, I opened up uh, uh, with... Uh, Take Your Fingers Off It, which was from the, uh, the Jug Band album. And I'm going to do another um, Memphis uh, uh, Jug Band song by Will Shade uh, that we did also on the album. And this is called On the Road Again. Uh, the Jug is, every time you hear that. I get married, tell you the reason why A woman is evil, do things on the sly You go to your home to see if your dinner's hot She never even put the neck bone into the pot She's on the road again Lord, a natural born easement on the road again She's on the road again Lord, a natural born easement on the road again I went to my window, my window was propped I went to my door, you know my door was locked Stood right up, I shook my head A great big rounder in my folding bed I got my gun, I shot through the glass I never saw a big old rounder run so fast He's on the road again Lord, natural born easement on the road again He's on the road again Lord, natural bone easement on the road again Friend come to my house, he puts down his hat he says to my wife, where is your husband at? Well, I don't know, they say he's in the pen Well, come on, mama, let's get on the road again He's on the road again Lord, natural born easement on the road again He's on the road again Lord, natural born easement on the road again
Thank you. Thank you. So the jug band broke up. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought somebody was clapping. About so why are you happy about the jug band breaking up? Oh. Okay. Excuse my self-indulgence, but here's a song I just learned a little while ago. And I just love doing it. It has nothing to do with the jug band. The Blues Project, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, American Flyer, and all the other stuff that I did. Um, this is a medieval folk song. That, uh, it's called King Kong Kitchi Kaimyo. It's actually Froggy Went a Courtin. Um, <laughs> Froggy went a courtin' and he did ride King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo With a sword and a pistol by his side King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo Kaimo Ki Mo Kaimo Ki Way down yonder in the hollow tree where an owl and a bat and a bumblebee King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo He rode till he came to Miss Mousie's door King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo and There he knelt upon the floor King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo Took Miss Mousie upon his knee. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo said, Miss Mousie, will you marry me? King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo Kaimo Kimo Kaimo Ki, way down yonder in the hollow tree. We're an owl and a bat and a bumblebee. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. Miss Mousie had suitors three or four. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. And there they came right in the door. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. Mr. Frog brought the suitors to the floor. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. With a sword and a pistol he showed all four. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. Kaimo Kimo Kaimo Ki. Way down yonder in the hollow tree. We're an owl and a bat and a bumblebee. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. Now they live far off. In a holler tree, King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo, where they now have wealth and children three. King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo, and Kaimo Kimo Kaimo Ki, way down yonder in the holler tree, where an owl and a bat. And a bumblebee, King Kong Kitchi Kitchi Kaimyo. Thank you. Thank you. I just had.
to do it. I did that on my record also, because... Uh, So don't ask me why. It's a long story. Just call me, you know, email me. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> It's in tune. <laughs> I just went one from one open tuning to another, which usually, you know, I need a calculator for. But now comes the really hard part. I'm putting the capo onto the fifth fret. And let's see if it stays in tune now. Come on, fella. Again, getting back to the Van Ronk days, I used to get a call from Dave um, every now and then, and he would say, can you get your parents' car tonight? And I would say, sure, what's happening? And he'd say, well, uh, we want to go to hang out at the, uh, you know, at Prestige Records or at the um, Electra Records. We want to hang out. And, and, um, and so I would go, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come pick you guys up. And, and there was one night it was uh, uh, Dave and Phil Oakes and, uh, and Bob Dylan. And um, and so uh, I picked them up. I had my phony ID and everything, and I was all prepared for the evening. And then we'd go down to the gaslight, and uh, everybody would jam and play and stuff like that. And then that third um, uh, storefront, on McDougal Street, right next to the Folklore Center and the Gaslight Cafe, was uh, was the Kettle of Fish. And the Kettle of Fish was uh, the the uh, the folk music equivalent of the White Horse Tavern, which is only a few blocks away, where Brendan Behan and Dylan Thomas drank themselves to death. So the Kettle of Fish was like the folk music equivalent of that. And uh, I used to sit there with the, with Dylan used to talk about how he was doing concerts in the South for progressive colleges that he never knew existed, you know, and, and Dave used to sit there wishing he was Bob Dylan, and it was just a ton of fun, you know, and um, for, for a kid, you know, like my age. And, and um, so I would just sit there and listen to these guys, and, and it was really an incredible memory, and I decided to write later on, years later, I wrote a song called The Kettle of Fish. I changed some of the names. Um, I, I, if if you w once you buy my book, I come back and tell me who is what, and I'll let you know. <laughs> it's funny. I have this book in front of me. Just it, it's just you know it's a, it's an age thing. You know, just in case. And most uh, people I know that are doing this, you know, have this thing just in case. Of course, Springsteen has teleprompters, so you can't tell, you know. And he's also written so many songs. But uh, I, 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 I have this. And the funny thing is, is that my eyes are, uh, I, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm mean, sort of like a crutch, but I can't read a thing in it, you know. So. Well, the sawdust smelled so good to me, and the whiskey poured like rain. 
There was an orange glow in the New York snow With the laughter and the pain And kids said, Sam, when you become a man There'll be a new day coming on Play guitar for yourself, don't you mind the rest They'll be here, but they'll be gone There was Sam who was a Marxist And Phil a soldier too And I remember all the ideals And we drink to the revenues And there was one who made it lucky And there was one who took his life But there was drink to cloud confusion For the kid who did survive it's the kettle of fish tonight And we'll drink by the candlelight And talk of wars and greed and whores And the power and the might It's the kettle of fish in circles By a drunken village dawn And the crowd grows thin as the sun pours in And all my friends are dead or gone I knew Tim who was a Marxist I knew Tim who was a wobbly And we drank to the 50 years From garbage strikes to coal mine fights How laughter turned to tears And when the waiter said, hey Tim, let's go You drank too much for now We trade songs in a local cafe and the kid was in a cloud Well, my feet were cold like the sawdust And my eyes were red with tears Like the country blues with the morning news There was conflict in the air And are you happy writing songs of love As you watch the dawning light but you'll miss the walk to the beer and talk In the kettle of fish tonight It's the kettle of fish tonight And we'll drink by the candlelight And talk of wars and greed and whores And the power and the might It's the kettle of fish in circles By a drunken village dawn and the crowd grows thin as the sun pours in And all my friends are dead or gone Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the electric portion of, well, I mean, obviously there's no electric here, but, but, um, oh, so, Dylan played the uh, Newport Folk Festival, and he played with an electric instrument. So all my friends in the village went running up to Manny's on 48th Street, and traded in their acoustic instruments for Stratocasters, Telecasters, and Les Pauls. And I, I, wasn't, I, I was in school, at the, I was in college. And uh, I would, uh, uh, on the weekends, I would teach guitar at Fred and Instruments, which is next to the Waverly Theater. Um, now, because of this whole thing happening, this is 1965 now, and um, so all my friends, like I say, were, were playing electric instruments, and. Uh, my friend Danny Kalb, who was in, um, who was also a student of Dave's, uh, his rhythm guitar player went to um, Europe, and he needed to have somebody play rhythm guitar. So uh, he came up to Fred and Instruments and said, uh, "Do you want to audition for my my Chicago blues band?" And I said, "Well, I, I never played an electric guitar. I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know what the dials. I don't know what that 
thing does. You know, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be able to do it. And I'm in school anyway. You know, and uh, I had a paper due on uh, Yeats and the Byzantium poems. I was an English major. Now I don't know if you've ever read Yeats and the Byzantium poems, but you would probably have slashed your wrist by now and wouldn't be around. <laughs> And uh, so I had, I had this paper at, due at some point, and uh, so I said, you know, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll, I put a D. Armin pickup, or Danny had one, put it on my uh, acoustic guitar, and he put it on 10 by accident, or it was on 10, and then we took the D. Armin pickup and put it into an amp, and the amp was also on 10 and not on standby. <laughs> <clears throat> What I heard was a flock of rhinoceroses attacking me at top volume. It was like, it scared the shit out of me. I mean, I was like almost knocked back to the, other, to the wall. And I, I really, I said, I can't, I can't do this, you know. Of course, what it was was feedback. And by my third acid trip, I learned to love it. <laughs> but <clears throat> that day, it was really scary. So, uh, I, I tuned down, I, I uh, made my volume down to zero, and I sort of like faked playing it. And Danny, as crazy as he was, at the end of the, my audition, he came up to me and he says, boy, you play great. So I got the job. I don't know what job, you know, so I figured, oh, okay, what the heck. So for the next couple of weekends, I started to grow into this thing, um, and I was really enjoying it. I started smoking pot, I got myself some bell bottoms, <laughs> I started, I said, I'm gonna grow my hair long. I got myself a hippie girlfriend. And I was like having a ball playing with other musicians, electric instruments. It was like, wow, this is great. So that was it, my life. I had to make a choice between doing a paper on Yeats and the Byzantium <laughs> poems or having the time of my life. <laughs> and I, I know it's, it's, it sounds funny, but that was really the schism in my life that brought me to where I am today. And I am thrilled to have made the decision to become a rock and roll person rather than WB Yates. <laughs> anyway, so that was the decision I had to make. Um, my parents didn't talk to me that much afterwards. They, they wanted me to be either a doctor or a lawyer. At times, they wanted me to be both a doctor and a lawyer. <laughs> and uh, so anyway. Uh, we became the Blues Project, and we made uh, we made three albums uh, when we were in the the, the, uh, the initial band made three albums for uh, for Verve Folkways, which was uh, part of uh, MGM, which was the worst record company that you could possibly have signed with, and uh, they didn't give us any money, you know. And the first, we, out of three albums, um, two of them were live. Uh, well, sort two, actually two and a half, and um, and it was, it was it was sort of terrible, you know, like uh, when you're under the under the gun, you know, in the studio to to you know make an album in six hours or so. Our first album was a live album. It was called Live at the Cafe of Gogo, -Go. and we uh, we sort of became the Cafe of Gogo -Go house band. And so they had a rehearsal once, or had a, had a gig uh, at, the, at the Agogo. Our drummer, Roy, broke his foot pedal, and somebody had to do something you know, while he changed his foot pedal. So I ran up to the microphone and sang one of my favorite songs at the time, which was Donovan's Catch the Wind. And uh, it wound up, we put it on the album. And I still love doing it, so. In the chilly hours and minutes, of uncertainty I want to be in the warm hold of your love and mine to feel you all around me and to take your hand along the sand Ah, but I may as well try and catch the wind When sundown pales the sky 
I want to hide a while behind your smile and everywhere I'd look your eyes I'd find for me to love you now would be the sweetest thing it would make me sing Ah, but I may as well try and catch the wind When rain has hung the leaves with tears I want you near to kill my fears To help me to leave all my blues behind Cause standing in your heart Is where I want to be and I long to be Ah, but I may as well Try and catch the wind Ah, but I may as well Try and catch the wind Donovan Thank you Thank you. So, we did our second album. It was called Projections, and uh, it was a pretty good album. Um, we, uh, we had some, uh, you know, at this point, F uh, FM radio was blossoming. And so if you had an album that had, like, long cuts on it, you didn't need hit singles. Um, and... Uh, And we didn't have any hit singles, but we had a lot of uh, we had a song called The Flute Thing, and uh, uh, we had a lot of FM airplay, and um, it was just part of the times, you know, that people were, 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 were turning away from AM radio and starting to listen to FM radio because they were playing long album cuts, and it, it opened, it just opened the floodgates of creativity for, for us potheads especially. It's true. Yeah, smoke a joint. Yeah, I think I'll write a ten-minute sweet now. You know. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Here now, you know, you know, I think I'll write a ten-minute sweet in five minutes. You have to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> so, I started writing songs uh, at this at this time. My first song was called September 5th, and uh, just a simple, uh, almost like a folk song, uh, and we worked it up. Uh, you can't call me from a snow white star a stairway, boom, ba boom, drums, bass, uh, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it for you in a second the way I originally wrote it. Um, I, remember, I was the ballad guy in all my bands, so you know that's why I'm not like you know doing crazy stuff. Anyway, um, the uh, we were on the road, uh, and uh, uh, MGM called uh, our our manager, who was like a uh, an idiot basically, and uh, he, was, he was a friend of of Danny's, the guitar player. You know, never hire a friend of a band member 
or relative to manage you. So MGM called our manager and said, Jeff, we have the tapes, we have the artwork, but we're missing the name of the song, the, of the second song on the first side. Do you know the name of the song, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Jeff goes, first song, second, uh, second song, first song, second song, first song. It's Steve's song. Thank you, Jeff. I get off the road. <laughs> like, and two weeks later, we get the, the proofs of the album. I'm looking at the artwork, and I'm like, Steve, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what is Steve's song? <laughs> so one of the reasons why I decided to write my book, come and, and, and perform for everybody in the last few years, one of the main reasons, actually, is because I want the world to know that I would never, ever name a song after myself. <laughs> so here is um, uh, September 5th, the way I wrote it. From a snow-white starlit stairway I may hear and not be far away at all But the sounds of our winter's love at night time They have vanished, they have silenced into fall You can crystallize through my mind's weary wanderings I may see your shadowed image on my wall Half staring, laughing, weaved by your indifference I would rather feel the pain than none at all If again I really see your face before me And we lie again together side by side Don't call me as I walk into the morning Please just realize that the pure has often died Thank you. Curse on MGM Records. <laughs> so our third album was called uh, Live at Town Hall. Oh, I forgot to say a little story about, do you mind the stories, by the way? Or, OK, OK. Um, we were, like I said, we were the house band at the, at the Cafe Ogogo. And, um, <laughs> I'll never forget one time going down early um, for rehearsal, and I went into the uh, bathroom. I had a pee, so I'm standing in front of the urinal, and I hear the voice of Teddy of of, of uh, Robert Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, coming out of the uh, stall, and I freaked out. He's talking to himself, Bobby Kennedy, in the stall of the of the Cafe Ogogo in the men's room, like at four o'clock in the afternoon. So I ran out, and I, I, and I, I, I got uh, the owner, Howard. I said, Howard, Bobby Kennedy's in a stall in the bathroom talking to himself. And Howard said, no, that's your opening act, David Fry, the impersonator. <laughs> 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 
And then I thought, oh boy, it's a good, because David Fry's specialty was Richard Nixon. And I was saying, wow, it's a good thing that he wasn't doing both Robert Kennedy and Richard Nixon at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we did this, uh, the third album, we had done the, uh, uh, the Murray the K show, which was pretty incredible. We shared a dressing room for, with Cream for 10 days, which was pretty amazing. Um, I got pretty close with Ginger Baker, which is like, not too many people can say that. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, after the, the, one of the shows, uh, Ginger and I went down to the dugout on Bleecker Street. And uh, I had a beer or two, and he, of course, got ripped. And I said, well, let's go to Gertie's Folk City. And we have to, he had to cross a field, which is now a building of NYU. So we walk across the field, halfway across the field, Ginger bends down and throws up. And I freaked out. I mean, I was naive, you know. And I freaked out, and I ran to him, and I said, Ginger, are you OK? He said, aren't we going to another bar? <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time I, I found out about this quaint British uh, habit. <laughs> <laughs> So we did um, this album. Um, it was called uh, Live at Town Hall. Uh, half of it was actually in the studio, and some drunk at uh, MGM put applause underneath all the tracks, which was really horrible. And uh, we just, we, oh, God, did we hate MGM. But uh, I, I, I'm going to digress for a second, and I have to uh, say that I am a little bit guilty of playing with uh, applause myself. Um, I produced Lou Reed after I left Blood, Sweat, and Tears. I did three albums with Lou. Um, and the first album we did was a live album called Rock and Roll Animal. And Lou, uh, we, we, when we did the, the uh, recording, it was like two concerts, and we had the multi-track tapes. Now, in those days, you didn't have di digital delays where you could just like bounce one off the other and have a stereo, but you needed a stereo applause, uh, stereo applause for the record. So you always recorded two tracks of, of applause, except we found out when we got back that the, we were missing a track, uh, an applause track. Uh, so I said to my engineer, Gus, I said, Gus, what are we going to do? You know, we only have like mono applause, you know. And he said, well, let me go into the RCA, the archive room, and see if I can come up with a concert that has applause. So he went into the, uh, the archive room, comes back, after a while, and he says, I found a half-track uh, tape of, of a concert with applause. I said, great, you can fly it in, fantastic. I said, what concert? He says, it's a John Denver concert. <laughs> now, I'm convinced that what killed Lou Reed was that he finally found out that half the applause of his best-selling album was from a John Denver concert. <laughs> anyway. This is from um, the. Uh, this is from that album, uh, Live at Town Hall, and I did a song by uh, by uh, uh, my friend uh, Patrick Sky. When first I came to town I came in from the country Not a penny did I have Not one cent could I offer But still our love it grew And our troubles they were few, they were few.
Many times I try to tell you Of all the hurt that I was feeling Thoughts tumble in my mind And words they lost their meaning I didn't mean to cause you pain So I'm leaving once again, once again And as for you, your tears will heal all the wounds that might have opened Just like time will clear the fields Of all the flowers that have ripened Of all these things you can be sure Only love Love Will endure Sky. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So we played um, the Monterey Pop Festival. It was one of the last gigs we did as the as the Blues Project. And um, the Monterey Pop Festival was phenomenal. It was great. I got to shake hands with Otis Redding, and and um, I got to uh, I saw uh, Janis Joplin by this. I was about the side of the stage when she did Ball and Chain. And I had dinner with, uh, I don't know if you've heard this on the sh Scott's show this morning. I had dinner with uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, backstage. No way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want to bet? <laughs> well, there was a, like a little hot dog stand. And, uh, and we had hot dogs together. And my book company said, in promoting my book, they said, oh, Steve jammed with Jimi Hendrix. I never jammed with Jimi Hendrix. I shared a bag of potato chips with Jimi <laughs> Hendrix, which I think is a lot hipper. Everybody jammed with Jimi Hendrix, but how many people have shared a bag of potato chips with Jimi Hendrix? So there. Anyway, Monterey was great. It was comfortable. It was fantastic, unlike that other festival. that it's, I've been going through hell this week with interviews and uh, it's, you know, with Woodstock, which was totally uncomfortable and sort of like horrible. Um, and I mean, we walked off stage thinking that it was a, you know, it was raining. And we, we thought, oh my God, that was a terrible set. But we didn't know that they recorded it. I didn't know until three weeks ago, when they they said that this this uh, thirty eight CD set was coming out, and uh, and then I found out that they recorded our whole show and that it was coming out on its own CD as one of the thirty eight CDs. And so I called the guy who put it together, Andy Zachs, and, or I, I emailed him and I said, can I get a copy? And which is great because he sent me one and they were sold out, you know, so. Um, it, it costs $800 for this thing, you know, with books and all kinds of incredible things. They even put in a guitar strap, it's a, in a wooden box. The thing is just amazing. And uh, I, like I said, I didn't know that, that they recorded our set. And I played our set, and it sounded great. I was like totally shocked. And I spoke to Fred Lipsius, who was also in the band, and I said, Freddie, didn't we hate playing there? And he said, yeah. I, I would imagine that it was so uncomfortable that when we got up on stage, we actually played well be because it was like a relief from being at Woodstock. I wore white pants to Woodstock. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awful. But we played great. I couldn't believe the... Uh, the, 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 this set. Anyway, um, so I went, uh, I was tr trying to figure out what to do, and I got a call from, uh, also in the Blues Project was uh, Al Cooper, and Al gave me a call 
a couple of months after Monterey and said uh, that he was going to England and he wanted to put together uh, a little band so he can raise enough money to do a ben or add a benefit at the Cafe Agogo. So we all, we, uh, myself, uh, my friend, uh, drummer Bobby Columbi and, and Al brought in uh, Jimmy Fielder who was in the Mothers of Invention in the Buffalo Springfield for a while. And uh, we, and Fred Lipsius, and we, we played at uh, a benefit for Al at the Cafe Ogogo. Nobody came, but as, but Al did raise enough money to get a cab to the airport. <laughs> so when he came back, he's, we said, "Hey, let's start a band." You know, it's, I mean, you wanted to have horns. Let's let's do it. You know, you've got some songs. I've got some songs. You know, so that's what we did, and. Um, We hired a horn section and rehearsed, and uh, we did our first album in two weeks. Um, we called ourselves Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and uh, and our first album was called Child is Father to the Man. And it's a lot of fun. If you listen to the album again, it's uh, we had a great time doing it, and uh, we just had a great time, and, and uh, it's a pretty good album. Um, I sang two songs on the... Uh, One was my own, which I won't do tonight because it's a nasty little song about unrequited love. Um, I wrote a bunch of songs about unrequited love. Uh, the reason was was when I wrote my first song, like some oh, Steve's song was about that. Um, when somebody, when a girl left me, I would like the first thing I would do was roll a joint, have a shot at Jack Daniels, and pick up my guitar and write a song. This became like a norm. <laughs> And so I kept writing these songs and like discouraging these relationships so the women would leave and I would make, I would write a song and make some royalties. So. The other song I sang in, uh, on the second uh, bs and album, I mean on the first Blood, Sweat and Tears album was uh, by my friend, my old friend Tim Buckley. And uh, this is uh, Tim's Morning Glory. purest candle close to my window hoping it would catch the eye of any vagabond who passed it by and I waited in my fleeting Before he came, I felt him drawing near And as he neared, I felt the ancient fear That he had come to wound my door and jeer And I waited in my fleeting house Tell me stories I call to the hobo Stories of old I knelt to the hobo Stories of cold I wept to the hobo and he stood before me in my fleeting house. No, said the hobo, no more tales of time. Don't ask me now to wash away the grind. Can't come in cause it's too high a climb 
And he stood before me in my fleeting house Then you be damned, I screamed to the hobo Leave me alone, I wept to the hobo Turn into stone, I knelt to the hobo And he walked away from my fleeting house I lit my purest candle close to my Window hoping it would catch the eye of any vagabond who passed it by And he walked away from my fleeting house Tim Buckley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, Al left the band. We hired a, a different singer um, and um, and we did our second album, and it, it was, uh, that was where all the hits came from. You Made Me So Very Happy was our uh, first hit off the album, and uh, that's when I got the call from my mother, uh, who said, uh, Stephen, we knew it all along. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Anyway, um, this is my contribution to the uh, second Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Sometimes in winter, uh, thank you, I gaze into the streets and walk. See, you threw me off. <laughs> I'm, I'm an old guy, for Christ's sake. Huh? Sometimes in winter Forgotten memories Remember you behind the trees With leaves that cried Sometimes in winter Forgotten memories This is very funny. Um, I'm going to just continue. Sometimes in winter, forgotten memories. Remember you behind the trees with leaves that cry. By the window, once I waited for you. Laughing slightly, you would run Trees alone would shield us in the meadow Making love in the evening sun Now you're gone, girl And the lampposts call your name I can hear them In a spring of frozen rain Now you're gone, girl and the time slow down till dawn It's a cold room And the walls ask where you've gone
Sometimes in winter I love you when the good times Seem like memories in love That never came Sometimes in winter I wish the empty streets Would fill with laughter from your tears To ease my pain Thank you. Thank you. It's funny, that song, you know, there's not that many words in it, and I used to do it every night with VS and T, uh, and I, I always forgot a couple of words. It's like really weird. Uh, it sort of reminds me uh, where we live um, in Kent, Connecticut. Uh, there's, there's a restaurant that, w that uh, was owned by uh, Dolph Trayman, is his name, and he used to be Peggy Lee's uh, piano player. And every night, Dolph would play, and he was in, he was in his uh, mid-90s, and he was still playing, and he was playing great. And I remember just before he died, my wife and I went to uh, have dinner at the Fife and Drum, and Dolph was playing, and he was playing beautifully. But what, and nobody, nobody, you know, just, it was just background music, right? But what I noticed, because I'm a musician, is that after each song, he would play the same song over <laughs> again. He kept playing the same song over again. He never changed songs. <laughs> and now I know what he feels like. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, here. So anyway, uh, so we had all these hit records. And um, we did, uh, uh, we won uh, a Grammy for Album of the Year over Abbey Road. <laughs> no, that's that's very strange. And um, you know, we won all of these awards, and we, you know, the Grammys and all of that stuff. And and um, it was like I remember October of 1969 was uh, an incredible time in New York. The uh, Mets were in the World Series with the Orioles, the first time Mets were in the series, and there was all of these um, uh, a huge anti-war march coming up. And I was very radicalized by this time and uh, hated the Nixon administration and the war, you know, and uh, actively fought against the, uh, against the war. And we were supposed to do a, a, a concert in, uh, at a certain date in October. And it was during uh, one of the major anti-war marches. And I went to the band, we had a call to meeting, and I said, listen, you know, because we were booked constantly, you know, and I said, I, I can't do this gig, you know, uh, because I, I have to march against this war and against this administration, and I love the band, I love you guys, I love the music, uh, but it's more important for me to march than it is to play music that day. So." Do what you want. You can fire me. You can find a substitute. You can do whatever you want, but I'm marching that day. So the band uh, canceled the gig. The night before the gig, I get a call from a friend. I got an extra ticket to the game tomorrow. <laughs> What did, what did I do? They went into extra innings. The Mets won an extra. Are you kidding? That was where, when Swoboda. The, I mean, there I was right there. Was Swoboda made his fabulous catch in right field. <laughs> so, so uh, later on, you know, I, I, I went into production. I produced Lou and a bunch of other people and. Uh, and uh, then I was asked to produce a band with uh, two guys, uh, Craig Fuller, and, uh, and who was uh, Pure Prairie League. Amy, what you going? He wrote and sang that. 
And uh, they were putting him together, management, with uh, Doug Ewell from the Velvet Underground. And um, they asked if I would be interested in producing it. And I said, I'd rather be in the band. <laughs> and uh, so it was me, uh, Craig, and, uh, and Doug. And I brought in uh, Eric Kaz, the fabulous writer who wrote uh, like Love Has No Pride for Linda Ronstadt and a whole bunch of things I'm blown away for Bonnie Raitt and uh, a whole bunch of things for Bonnie Raitt. And we called ourselves American Flyer and we never played anywhere. Uh, but, but we did a lot of rehearsing and um, what we did was we had uh, a, a, a kid, one of our roadies, uh, stand at the end of my driveway. That's where we rehearsed at my house. And when, whenever the head of a record company would come to visit and they came to us, he would like s signal. Meanwhile, we had rehearsed this one country song and it was gorgeous. The harmonies, it was like perfect. But it was just meant to, the head of a record company would walk into my house, we'd be doing this incredible song and we'd stop. And the, and the head of the record company would say, oh no, please. Please, go on. That was fantastic. <laughs> of course, we're just wetting the guy's appetite, you know. And we just saw dollar signs, you know, every time. And uh, so all these heads of record companies came up. And, uh, and uh, uh, the guy that we uh, were really, that I, I was an old friend of mine, Al Teller, who was just made head of United Artists Records, which was not, you know, one of the big record companies at the time. And Al said, uh, well, what can I do? I can't, I can't afford you guys, you know, like Columbia or RCA can. So is there anything I can do to sweeten the deal? So we were joking around. We said, yeah, get, us, get George Martin to produce us. You know? And that's what he did. <laughs> so we went to United Artists, and our first album was produced by George Martin, one of the, uh, one of the greatest uh, moments uh, in my career. Um, George is, was wonderful. If you don't know who he is, he was the Beatles producer. And uh, he was just, I mean, I saw what he did with the Beatles, you know, by his background, the background vocals that he arranged, the, uh, the orchestrations. Uh, George played piano on, on uh, which ones that had piano? Dun -dun 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 -dun. You know, was that in my life? But he played piano on most of the things that the Beatles did. And, um, it was just a, he, he was an incredible person, a great person. He just died a couple of years ago, but I, I just love George. I love working with him. I learned so much from him and uh, felt blessed to be, to, to work with him. With him. And um, George was just uh, fantastic. So he produced um, uh, the first American Flyer album, which is actually a pretty good album. Uh, our record company then went through changes, that was, so they didn't promote it, we didn't go out on the road, but we made two albums and they're both actually pretty good. Um, and um, George took one of, my, one of my songs that we did with Blood, Sweat and Tears, that, but it never put it out, and he liked the song, but it was like a funeral dirge and George beetled it up a little bit. And uh, you know, so this is... Uh, this is uh, one of the songs on the first American Flyer album. It's called Back in 57. And I want to thank all of you for coming tonight, and uh, especially Tom and the staff here, who has been so nice to me. Um, and, of course, uh, my cousin Andy and uh, his fabulous wife, Sue. Um, it's been a great trip. It's only a couple of days, but... Thank you. I love Rochester, and I think we're talking about coming back at the Sleep, little girl. You're a candle in a cold, cold world. And I'm the lucky one. Afraid as I am, I know I'm your only man. I feel like a child. I need your body close. 
to mine And friends for life ain't easy to find But you, you are a friend of mine I thought I was a man in high school But you can never be a man to a woman who gives you love and treats you good and gives you everything she could and back in 57 I believed in heaven someday whoa back in 57 I believed in heaven someday Sleep, little one Your rainbow in my morning sun And as I wake up All my thoughts seem so great But you, you are a rainbow today feel like a boy now in the same ways I felt like a man in my high school days I've been bought and I've been sold that's just rock and roll and back in 57 I believed in heaven someday whoa Back in 57, I believe in heaven someday. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to move here tonight. <laughs> wow. From Bessie Smith. Woke up this morning. Chickens crowing for day. Fell down the right side of my pillow, my. Man had gone away Yes, by his pillow He left a note He said, the reason I'm leaving Jane You got my goat Well, now there's no time to marry No time to settle down Well, I'm a young woman, ain't done running around. Well, I'm a young woman, I ain't done running around. Some people call me a hobo someday, call me a bum, nobody knows my name. Nobody knows where I'm from Well, I'm as good as any woman in your town Well, I ain't no high yellow and I Ain't no kind of brown Well, I ain't gonna marry, ain't gonna Settle down, I'm gonna drink good moonshine And run these browns down You see that long, lonesome road And you know it's got to end Well, I'm a young woman 
And I can get plenty of men You see that long, lonesome road And you know it's got to end Well, I'm a young woman And I can still get plenty of men 